Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this afternoon mountain weather update. All right, here's what I'm seeing this afternoon. Latest data, latest trends. We're in the middle of the storm handoff. So one storm moving out of Colorado waiting on the Arctic front to come barreling south. And the Arctic front is the key. There's also going to be an area of low pressure that rides along it. But that Arctic front will be a focal point for strong orographic snow, high snow ratios, and just a lot of efficiency with just ringing out big totals. The heaviest snow window for Utah is PM 112, afternoon, evening 112 through 114. Heaviest snow window for Colorado, afternoon, evening 112 through 115. There are two snow surges, one with the Arctic front once it sets up shop, and then the low. The low will come out of Oregon where you're going to get hammered up there today, tomorrow, and on the 13th. That low will then swipe the Sierra with snow, and then it will move into Utah and eventually into Colorado and New Mexico before departing. So you could have a lull in the action in between these two surges. It's possible. Oregon, heavy snow now through 113 and a lot of wind. Lots of wind. Basically another blizzard today and tomorrow. California snow 113, a little bit on 117, and potentially a lot more on 120 with a bit of a pattern shift. I'll show you that coming up. The Northeast, you've got a storm. Really now the only one on the horizon as of this afternoon, 112 to 113. The other storm systems, remarkably, the one that was due in on 116-117, there seems to be now a data split, and it may miss the Northeast altogether. And then the one down the road on 120, not totally sure about it. There's really, there's really not enough data to support it yet. So I'm just not going to put it on the map as of yet. I'm going to leave it off for now. It's so far out there. All right, so let's go into water vapor this afternoon across the West. So there goes the one storm. It's departing, and that's going to be that big storm through Chicago, and it's going to run up into the northeast as basically another bomb cyclone. Lots of wind, heavy snow at the onset in Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, changing over to rain snow. All right, here's the Arctic front. It is barreling south right here. It's draped over Oregon, absolutely just hammering uh, Mount Bachelor. Well, this front is going to dive all the way in and become a focal point, again, for heavy snow. There's an area of low pressure that will develop. You can almost see it. It's going to be over in this area. And that's what will come down, enhance the snow in Oregon, and swipe, and swipe the Sierra before then it moves through Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, um, and reinforces the snow. That's what will bring potentially the heaviest surge of snow all weekend when that low finally does move in. All right, let me show you what the forecast radar and satellite look like. So that's the current state of affairs. We're in the handoff, but the snow's going to be picking up fast. All right, here we are, snowing. There's the Arctic front draped over the Wasatch, the Tetons, and the central and northern mountains of Colorado all the way back into Oregon. Uh, here we are on Saturday, 1.13 in the morning. Heavy snow, Wasatch, heavy snow with potentially snow squalls in Utah and also in Colorado in the central and northern mountains of Colorado. A lot of jet-induced um, snow banding. And then you'll notice in Oregon and now you can see the low taking shape off the coast of northern California. That's the, uh, the back side of this. Here it comes inland. There's 1.13 in the afternoon. So you see, you can almost see the lull in the action. Now the low comes in and redevelops and, and refills in that snow into uh, Utah and into Idaho. And this is 1.13 late in the day. Here are 114 in the morning. Snow, Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado. Heavy stuff. That low pushes in. And then it's in Colorado, 114. It starts to depart. What you're looking at on the backside is the last part of that, that Arctic front draped over those same areas producing snow, even though the low has now moved away. Same thing right here on 115. Uh, it's, there it is on 115 in Colorado. It's the same thing. It's that Arctic front that finally slides through. Now, this is 116. I talked about this morning a potential storm system on 116 through 119 across the northern tier. There's still a little bit of that in the forecast, but it's not nearly as pronounced as the way it looked this morning. You can almost see it. The snow is going to be much lighter on 116 in the northern tier. In fact, let me extend this out. Here's 117. You can see some of the snow riding down through Montana, the Tetons, brushing the Wasatch, and a little bit spilling into Colorado. Not nearly as much as what I was showing 
with my update this morning. Why? Look at look out west. Look at the disturbance coming through California on 117. And look at it by 120. The pattern has taken a different complexion. By the time we get to 120, it's all about what's happening on the west coast. The subtropical jet has become extremely active by 120. That's the way it looks. In fact, let me show you what it looks like. So this is the current state of the jet. Trough over Colorado, New Mexico with that low moving out of the heartland, eventually taking aim on Chicago and the Northeast. Look at the jet by 112. Powerful setup, co-location, subtropical and polar jet, cranking out the snow. Friday, Saturday, 70 mile an hour wind gusts in the Wasatch, the Tetons, and in the central and northern mountains of Colorado, raking the high peaks. Powerful, powerful snow production right there. 117. There's a little bit of that north northwest flow, northwest flow coming out of Montana, BC, down through Wyoming, Idaho, brushing Utah and Colorado, but not as much as this morning. Because look what happens by 120. Boom. Totally different, right? Now we're looking at a, a very strong subtropical jet aiming at the west coast, and that's going to be moving, that's going to push potentially. Um, some new moisture into the west coast and California more direct. So that'll be something different that we look at for 120. All right, let's get into this. Wind on Friday. Again, very windy, Utah, Colorado, and Wyoming. You can see the wind gusts here projected over most of the mountain areas in Colorado of 50 to 70 miles per hour or more. The tan color is 60 plus. Saturday morning. Same kind of thing. Very strong winds, 50 to 70 miles an hour, maybe even 80 miles per hour over the southern mountains of Colorado. It's just going to absolutely uh, just, just wreck the snowpack and just increase the avalanche danger. All right, new grand total map today through the 20th. We've still got over 50 inches to go in Little Cottonwood Canyon. Three feet for Park City, Snow Basin, and Deer Valley. In Colorado, the western slope, well, basically the central and northern mountains. That's where that's where the big snow is going to be of one to three feet of accumulation. And I'll zoom in on some of that here in just a second. One to two feet up for the Tetons yet to go. Bachelor still has 50 inches plus to go and 10 to 20 inches for the Sierra on the way. That's the grand total map by 120. Let me zoom in on that map. Central and northern mountains of Colorado, I-70 corridor, one to three feet potentially on the way. You can see the numbers over Loveland, Winter Park, Longs, Buff Pass, again in that one to three foot range, a little less down in Summit County with this uh, with this pattern, but still over a foot. All right, one more stop, a little, fr a little further south than that. You've got Capitol Peak, Snowmass, the West Elks, Crested Butte, Leadville, Mount Harvard, Monarch Pass would be just south of this map. Uh, the potential here is for one to two feet. Not quite as much in Snowmass. I'd like to see more, but this flow is just, it, it just isn't perfection for snow mass, but it is good for Crested Butte. Um, all right, now let's go and break this down by period. Here's 111 through 112, the rest of today through tomorrow. Um, one to six, mainly in the central and northern mountains of Colorado. Another basically one to two feet um, for the Wasatch and um, seven to 12 inches roughly for the Tetons and almost three feet for Bachelor. Here's the second period, 113 to 115. A lot of this is just that Arctic front inducing this type of um, just really efficient uh, snow production. One to two feet in Colorado, uh, potentially two to three feet in the Wasatch. And most of the snow has now moved south with the Arctic front out of the Tetons. You've just got leftover snow of probably four to eight inches. The final period, 116 to 120. Numbers are much lighter than what I showed this morning with that, that storm system 116 to 119. Just some light overrunning snows with that northwest flow across Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, and the central and northern mountains of Colorado. What you see hitting California comes on 120, and the numbers would go up on 121, assuming that pattern holds. All right, here's the, the view in the northeast, and I've had to scale back the numbers significantly. Because really now all we're dealing with is 112 to 113. I just, I don't have enough confidence to put anything else on the board at a later date at this point. But that could change, obviously. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here to this afternoon uh, mountain weather update. I always appreciate it. Be safe out there, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.